The second to last folder you'll notice is the commission payout form, and it has a heading of submit at least three days before closing. Now we do this for several reasons. One is we wanna make sure to give the title company or the attorney enough time to review our CDA and make sure that their numbers are correct with our numbers as far as total compensation for yourself. You don't wanna miss out on commission or transaction fees. Now, the other way is just in case this title company or attorney gives us any pushback on our CDA, we can send them the proper legal documentation that shows that this way of getting you paid is okay. That's why we want to do it at least three days before closing. We do not want to submit this the day of closing for the very first time and have us scrambling because it's like, hey, I closed in an hour. Can you sign my CDA? No, it should be done three days before closing. Also, just know that if you submit a CDA form and your previous three folders have not all been approved, this form will not be signed off on. So even if you submit only this folder and not these other ones, we will return this and say, we need these other documents submitted and approved prior to signing the CDA. Now, how do you fill out the CDA? And let's go over that. So we wanna make sure we fill this out completely. This is the Commission Disbursement Authorization Form, the CDA. So let's say, for example, Main Street, Nashville, TN, 333, title company, ABC title. Let's say our closing date is Wednesday. Our purchase price is 300,000. I am the seller's agent because I listed the property. Now, the first question that's very important, is this a lead referral from the sources in particular, OpCity, Redfin, Sold.com, et cetera? The reason we ask that is because if you close one of these leads from these lead providers, they charge a referral fee due at closing. So we can add them as a third payable line and make sure they get paid the money that they're owed. If not, for most deals, agents select no because they didn't get a lead from here. Now, lead source. We ask this so that way we can track where are agents getting all these leads? Not because we want to call your leads or call your uncle, but because we want to help other agents and show, hey, 70% of the recent closings have all been sphere of influence. 5% have been for sale by owner, 2% have been referral. And so we just want to share with other agents, hey, percentage wise, here's where leads are coming from. So that way you can focus on those lead sources. So let's say, for example, this came from my sphere of influence, like a family member or friend. Now, total compensation earned. So this form allows the title company or attorney, we can delegate our responsibility to split the commission and have them do it for us. They can split it for us and pay you. However, the state guidelines with this form being approved is that the broker has to sign off on this form. If a title company just hands you the money, that's illegal. If the broker has signed off, we're compliant. So we've got to make sure that you do not get paid unless agent signature and broker signature are both on this form. So let's say, for example, I made 3% commission. That would be $9,000. Now, down here, we break down this total of $9,000. How does this get paid out? And this is what we're telling title down here. So let's say, for example, uh, we're going to say Zach Greist is the agent. He makes 8701. And now you tell title, how do you want to receive your money? Do you want to pick up your check from title? Do you want title to wire it to you? If you put wire, call and give your wiring instructions over the phone. Don't put them here because emails can be hacked. Mail, if you want title to mail you your check, you can select uh, where your address is and type that in over here. So let's say I live at Main Street, you would type that here. Uh, the other thing is other that almost never is checked. So don't worry about that. But if there is other, you just mark what how they're paying. you. Let's say pick up in this example, I would sign this as the agent. You can hit save and now you drop back out. So that was the CDA. So we'll go submit for review. Scroll down, commission payout form, submit at least three days before closing, submit. And then it would send it to us. And we're going to make sure whenever we see this folder submitted, we want to make sure everything else has previously been approved. If not, we're not going to sign the CDA. Now, let's jump back into the CDA and give more complex examples of what might be filled out on this form. Let's say, for example, that you charge the client the transaction fee. That's perfectly fine, but it is optional. If you did that, we want to make sure that transaction fee form is signed off by the client. They need to be disclosed in writing and sign off that they approve being charged a transaction fee. If you do charge it and they sign off, here's how you would input that on the CDA. Total compensation earned. So 9,000. 
we would go plus 299 equals 9299. And then down here, you would update the totals. And now, same process. You would sign this, save, and then submit for review. Now, the reason we do the plus 299 is that makes the accountant's job so much easier. Instead of just doing this and then trying to figure out like, wait, that's just over 3%. There's a little bit extra. Oh, maybe they charge a transaction fee. Instead, when we see this, we know instantly check for that transaction fee form to be signed. So this really makes our life super easy. So if you can do this, that would be great. If you charge more than the transaction fee, you would just update this. Let's say it's $3.99. So that's an extra $100 to you. And then it would be filled out as such. The other example could be, let's make it uh, more complicated. So let's say, for example, you and you have a referral fee due to another agent, and they are pay you're paying the referral fee only on the commission, not the total compensation. We want to keep this a little bit easier for this example. Let's say you agreed to a 30% commission. So you would put that third agent as the referral fee on here. Now, if it's an agent in our company, you can put the agent's name. If it's an agent with a different company, you will actually need to put the company's name because, again, commissions can only be paid and received to the brokerage itself, not the individual agent. So let's say they work with 123 Realty and a 30% referral fee off only the commission would be $2,700. Mail them their check to, let's say, Atlanta, Georgia. And now here, is 6300. Sign off, save it, submit for review. Or the last scenario that I want to break down is let's scrap all this. And let's say you hired a transaction coordinator. Same process. You could go Zach Taylor Real Estate for the Zach Taylor Real Estate transaction coordinator. Or let's say you used a different TC company. Let's say they are $300. So now you would have minus two, you would have 8401. So now these totals equal the total compensation. We used to title this total commission earned, and it threw off more agents because wrongfully we titled it that way. And so if they charge the transaction fee to the client, so we've changed it to total compensation earned. So that could be a mix of commission and transaction fees charged to the client. But whatever's up here, this total should equal everything down here. And then once you sign off, save it, submit for review, and that is how you fill out the CDA. And once it's signed by me, go ahead and send this to the title company. That way they can make sure their numbers line up exactly like yours and you can be paid as soon as they disperse funds.